Alright, so Carson, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for agreeing to meet with me and do a little interview. I'm sure it's going to help lots of buyers and sellers and even other realtors out there. Um, just want to ask you a little bit about your background in terms of... So Carson, how long have you been doing uh, photography for? Um, I've always been interested in photography as long as I can remember. Uh, when I was a really young kid, my mother got me this bright blue uh, Fisher Price camera and I remember taking that with me everywhere and just taking pictures of everything and um, but I remember those cameras yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but professionally uh, I was thinking about it and my my first gig was probably like 17 years ago um, a friend of mine who is a photographer uh, was supposed to shoot a wedding and uh, the day before he uh, fell on a, on a broken dock and broke his ribs. Oh no. So he called me and asked if I could help him out, carry his gear, be his second shooter at this wedding. Oh wow. And uh, so I was like, sure, I'll, I'll gladly help you out. And I went and did all this and it was nerve wracking and exciting. And at the end of the night he paid me and I didn't expect it. I just thought uh -huh. I was going to help him. Uh -huh. And uh, so I was just totally, totally into this. So like, wow, I didn't realize you could make money doing this. And, yeah, uh, doing something that you love yeah, and so that you're passionate about. I, I started really getting into it about then and uh, shot a lot of portraits and worked my way up to shooting weddings and worked as a press photographer for a while. And uh, that was that was really fun and exciting too. Did some writing and reporting. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, just decided to merge my photography interest with my interest in architecture mm -hmm. and got into real estate shooting and architectural photos. Oh, nice. So That's fantastic. And that's how you and I met was uh, someone referred you, another real estate agent that I know, and they recommended you for my photography pictures and I use you for all of my listings. So and I appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> and I appreciate your great work too. Thanks. Uh, so, so Carson, as far as uh, equipment goes, what you know, I, I could see that your lens is way different than the lens on my camera. What type of equipment do you need that, and why is it that a realtor just can't use their phone, or a really nice, I have a pretty nice camera um, that we're using to record this interview with. Why can't I just use that really nice camera to take pictures inside of a house? And why should a realtor pay you to, to use your professional equipment that you have? What's the difference? So uh, the main difference between uh, your phone or uh, a smaller point and shoot type camera would be that the, um, a professional camera allows you to interchange the lenses, which allows me to put on uh, different different um, sorry about that wide angle lenses or macro lenses or uh, a specialty lenses for whatever the the occasion calls for. Um, another difference between this camera and some of the, the smaller pocketable cameras would be uh, this is better in low light situations which really can pull out a, uh, the shadows in a dark room and really um, better capture the colors of a room mm -hmm. uh, and I guess another another um, difference would be that this has the ability to fire external flashes and mm -hmm. I can control it remotely okay. very useful Wow, is that when you hold up that, that thing in your hand? Is that the external flashes that you're referring to? Yeah. yeah. I know you have like, he has a, a piece of equipment that I've never seen a photographer use before and it's, I don't know, it makes you feel like you're in, on stage in Hollywood or something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of cool. It's, it's a big remote flash mm -hmm. um, and one good flash pop in a room can really bring out the true colors of a room and make it brighter, more inviting, feel cleaner. Awesome. So. Very nice. Now, if, you know, uh, let's say I have a seller that I'm talking to, like for example, a for sale by owner. And, you know, a for sale by owner will oftentimes, you know, take their own pictures and I might look at the photographs online that they have posted and I can tell that they did not use a professional photographer. If I wanted to offer some tips, because I try it my best to offer value, you know, to folks, even if they want to try to sell their own home, okay, if you insist, but here's a couple of things you might want to try. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest somebody who insists on taking their own photos? What type of tips do you have for them? Like, what's important? Like, decluttering and, you know, I know that's probably the most obvious, but is there anything else that you could think of? Well, definitely decluttering. Um, 
and a lot of people look past the cleaning of things like ceiling fans or uh, countertops, appliances, things that are reflective, mirrors and windows. Yeah. Um, the camera really tends to bring out mm, smudges and dirtiness in gotcha. and, and that type of thing. And um, it can really make your home look dirtier than it appears in person. So just take a little time, clean up, clean up shiny surfaces. Um, Remove personal traces of items, photos from the walls, calendars. Calendars can make your home look dated. If you take photos in December and your listing goes into January, yes. uh, that's not necessarily a good thing for, for potential buyers to see. Probably uh, decoration too. Decorations, like that definitely. Said, Christmas definitely, decoration. Definitely if decorations. Yeah. Um, anything like that. Signs of pets. Um, you know, uh, remove your cars from the driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, personal, personal photos. I think I said. Um, I actually have a whole list of, of tips on oh, my website. You? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! So, I'll have to share that. Yeah, in I, can, the, uh, I can get you a description copy or just look, look there. So. I'll, I'll just share your website. Link. Sure. Now, ceiling fans. Those should always be turned off, right? When you're taking photos, sometimes I see them. Like you can see that they don't have the high shutter speed or whatever it's called, and you can see the fan in the photos and it kind of distracts from the picture and what you're looking at. Right, so ceiling fans when they're on, um, to back up a little bit, when I when I shoot a typical room, I don't just take one photo. Mm -hmm. I will take um, one photo with the pop of light, okay. another photo at a, a different shutter speed so that I can let in a little bit more natural light. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll take up to five different photos and blend those together so I can get the darker areas of the room to kind of match the, the brighter areas of the room so it all balances oh, out. Oh, really? And when the fan is spinning and I have five different photographs that I'm trying to blend, you you have oh. many different blades appearing up there and it looks it looks strange. So yeah. It's just, it's just easier overall to do it with the fan off. Oh, wow. I never knew that that's what you did, that you took five different photos and made one photo. Yeah, usually, it's, cool. usually it's at least three. Okay. Um, and then up to five, depending on, you know, the if there's a very bright light at one end of the room and you want to capture like a pool setting mm -hmm. in the background, that's an entirely different exposure than a, a dark room that may actually um, be adjacent to that window. So. Oh, wow. That's pretty awesome. Good to know. All right. So, Carson, as far as length of time, how long should a person, I'm sure it's going to depend on the size of the home. Definitely. You've done a variety of sizes of homes for me. I think anywhere from 700 square feet to 3,000 square feet. Um, what should a person think about like when I'm scheduling an appointment and I'm saying, hey, my photographer's gonna be coming by, how long should they expect for you to be there? And how would we gauge that? I'd say the typical session's about an hour uh, on site. Okay. Um, it could go up to two hours if it's a, obviously a larger home. Uh, or a home with a lot of architectural details that need um, highlighting, yeah. special faucets or pool features right. or things like that where I really would like to detail those shots for potential buyers to see. That that could take extra time, so okay. up to two hours. Up to two hours inside the home. Yeah. And then of course you do go on site within the community, like if there's a, a boat dock or a marina or something to highlight basketball courts. You will have you will take the time out to go in the neighborhood and highlight those. Yeah, definitely. Those are great selling points, and yeah. they're necessary to be highlighted. Yeah, so absolutely. And photographed. Absolutely. Um, I, this wasn't part of the questions, but I want to comment on it since they're here. You've got these fan, this fancy lighting, and I do have my ring light that you can't see in. You know, in this interview, what is the difference between having just a ring light like this um, or this when you're doing photography? So a ring light um, is great for video. It's it's a more steady uh, pulse of light, but it cannot get as bright as a strobe light or a or a flash. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, one powerful burst of light that can actually fill an entire room. Uh, whereas this is more concentrated, not as bright, but more more steady, more, more consistently. Okay, and so. you'll see this a lot when you're doing, um, I remember when my daughter would get pictures taken when she was little, mm -hmm. this would be around, you wouldn't see them in the photos obviously, but they would use this for the lighting. Is yeah. that typical, uh, more so with portraits versus real estate? 
when you're using this type of lighting? Uh, both. I would I would say with a portrait session, they use um, studio strobes that are typically plugged in. Okay. And what I use are battery powered, but um, maybe not quite as powerful as a studio strobe can be. Okay. But um, I do have one big light that can really light up a, a large space. Oh, really? Wow. But, but just carry just in case. Okay. That's good to know. Carson, as far as um, real estate agents reaching out to you, I know that if there is a, a listing that a real estate agent has, they're going to seek out, most likely, they're not gonna wanna use their own equipment, they're gonna wanna use a professional photographer like Carson. But as far as uh, sellers go, have you ever had somebody who was selling their own home reach out to you directly instead of um, just it being when it's listed with an agent? I have. Uh, yeah, it's, have you? It's, oh. it's not quite as frequent, um, mm -hmm. but there, there have been a couple instances where a, a for sale by owner has reached out to me for. Well, that's good. That's good. To, that's good to know. Because yeah. I would say probably, I don't know, ninety percent. And if you're watching this and you're a realtor, you probably agree. About ninety percent of the pictures that are for sale by owners do not have professional photography, and it's, you know, it's so unfortunate because the house is is not featured the same way. So when you're called upon to take photos, how quickly do you typically have those pictures ready? How long does it take? So. Uh, like we talked about, one to two hours on site, and then um, I spend about one to two hours back in my office mm -hmm. editing the photos, preparing them for the MLS, okay. and then the upload process and getting them ready to, to go to the agent. So if needed, an agent can have their photos in 24 hours? Yeah, my, my typical stated turnaround is 24 to 48 hours. Okay. If somebody needs them quicker, I will do everything I can to get them the photos faster. So oh, that's awesome. I have turned around um, one job in three hours. Once. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, was a little, that was a little nerve wracking. That's crazy, but yeah. It, uh, it went well. So. That's awesome. So, you said it takes you about two to three hours to do all the editing at home? Yeah. Um, uh, one to two hours. One to two hours yeah. for all the editing. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty. And do you use any kind of special software or tool, you know, tools that you? that are not privy to other people, or is it? Uh, no, it's all available okay. to anybody. I use uh, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom. Oh, okay, um, I've heard a, of those. Adobe Raw. Um, Adobe is, is uh, badass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They have their pros and cons, but it's, okay. it's really the best thing to use, I think. I've, I've tried many different solutions and keep going back to them. Yeah. I heard somebody uh, that I knew most recently uh, was speaking about Adobe products and so that that's good to know. Yeah. All right. So another question that I have, uh, Carson, is in regards to drone photography. Drone photography is such a great tool uh, for realtors to have for their listings to be able to take aerial footage, um, especially when it's a big property. I usually tell in my um, listing presentation uh, I include it in there, but I say that it's something that we're going to talk about later in terms of our listing appointment because I don't do it for every single listing that I have, but um, definitely for land, uh, which you've done it for me for, for land. Tell me about your drone. Um, I mean, how did you get into that? And that requires like a special, like you have to take classes, right? And you have a pilot's license. Like, what does that process all look like? Yeah, so you do need to be licensed. Uh, it's, it's called a Part 107 um, license through the FAA, and uh, that allows you to fly commercially and take photographs. Um, really, there's there's no better way to, to really highlight a property to, like you said, for land, um, or to show a pool, or the condition of a roof, or even um, things in the area, points of interest, whether you're close to a restaurant, close to a rain, close to a lake, um, or parks, recreational facilities, things like that. Uh, a partial aerial view of the home showing the uh, points of interest in the background is really, there's really no other way to do it. Yeah, so. that, that's pretty awesome. Do you have to have a special permission? Like is every home um, able to have drone photography, at least in our area here in Polk County, let's say, for example, no matter where it was, or is it certain areas are kind of off limits? What's the deal on that? There are no fly zones. Okay. Uh, there's 
there are applications you can go on before you fly, and it'll show you whether or not you're in a no-fly zone. Okay. Um, there are certain areas that are no-fly zones. You can apply for a waiver to fly in those areas, um, and sometimes the waivers are not granted depending on how close you are to an airport or other certain areas of uh, oh, government protection, things gotcha. like that. Uh, downtown areas are, some, are sometimes off limits. So. Okay. What about in HOAs, like the communities themselves? Are they typically? It's it's not really related to the HOA as no, much as okay. it is the airspace above it. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So as far as flying um, a drone and having some restrictive air spaces, if a realtor has a listing and it's an, uh, a listing with a, that features a really beautiful piece of property before promising their seller that they can get some drone pictures and put it, you know, including that information on a listing appointment, is there any way at all for a, a listing agent to find out prior to that appointment as far as no-fly zones go? There are, there's several apps that you could download on your phone. Uh, I would just oh. say go to your, your app store and look for no-fly zone on the app store. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, there's, there's several. I, I actually use uh, two different ones, I should have. Oh, that's okay. Media. But I use two different ones uh, just to double check because um, sometimes you may be on the border of a no-fly zone mm -hmm. and it's, it's useful information to know. But there, there are alternatives to a drone if you are in a no-fly zone. Okay. Uh, I do something called pole photography and I have a very long fiberglass pole that extends way out and I have a camera that goes on that. Oh, and wow. I can get 20, 25 feet in the air oh, wow. and take similar shots to what you would get from a drone oh. um, without having to go through the restrictions. Um, and it gives a really nice perspective on the house. You still get the top-down view of the roof and without the liability of flying a drone. So. Wow, that's awesome. Now, if a, an agent or a, an up for sale by owner, um, a seller, wants to find out about pricing, do you list that on your website? As is there like a range depending on size of house and what kind of services, or is it something they would call you for directly and have a conversation with you about? I list price on my site. You do? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So once I list your website in the description, they'll be able to access your prices. And so then, as far as drone photography, if you don't mind sharing, what? Because I, I know that it's a little bit more expensive than just getting your regular photos that you do for the interior. What is the prices for the drone footage? So regarding the drone, it's uh, $100 add-on in addition to the home okay. shoot, whatever package uh, someone chooses for their home. Awesome. So part of that is I have to pay for insurance for every flight mm -hmm. um, and the cost of the drone if anything were to happen. So it's not just a five minute thing to fly up. There are a lot of liability concerns, so that's Absolutely. Not just, yeah. Now, is there, you know, for the, again, for folks watching, we are located in Polk County, Florida. Uh, we are both in Lakeland, Florida, but uh, I know that you've gone out kind of like 30 minute, I, I think you've even drove, drove like 50 minutes for my other, my listing in Claremont. How far do you, like what radius do you cover? Do you do Polk County, Lake County, Hillsboro? Like how far out do you go? Do you try to stick with Polk County? Um, I typically stick in Polk County, but I have done jobs, Hernando County, Pasco, uh, Hillsboro, Lake, mm -hmm. um, and, and Polk, so okay. basically. Kind of this Tampa yeah, Bay area. Central, Central Florida. I'll go okay. out if, if it's an interesting job or, you know, okay. it's, a, it's a client that I... Sure. Yeah. So if I had a listing in, say, Winter Garden, which I might soon, um, you'd be willing to go out to, to Winter Garden sure, for I me. Sure, Winter Garden. So you, yeah, yeah. Plain Street, right? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a great spot? All right, well, anything else that you can think of that I didn't cover in our, our chats? Uh, no, not really. Just, I think you've covered a lot of it, and I uh, just wanted to thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank no, thank you for doing this. I do appreciate it. and. Um, definitely, you know, next time if we need to do another interview, I'll call you. Um, one thing I want to mention to the folks watching is the website for Carson will be in the description. And then also the apps that uh, he is recommending for real estate agents to use, I will have those in the description as well. And I would imagine, just a thought that came to mind, the location that the person is using it, for example, if a real estate agent in California 
is using that app. It's not specific to Florida or anything. No, there's geolocation Perfect. abilities in the app, and it'll you can actually just put the address in, and it will show you whether that address is in a no-fly zone or not. So. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Well, there you have it. And again, thank you, Carson. I do appreciate it. Thank you. All right.